The third bag of killifish eggs I've received today is Hypslobius sertanejo. Now, this has an incubation of two to six months and they've already been in this bag for about two months now. So I had a quick look at the bag and I can't see any eyed up eggs, but I am going to empty this bag out just to have a closer look uh, because I have a feeling that these eggs may be ready. But if they're not ready, I'll just bag them up again and wait a couple more weeks. Like I said, depending on temperature, they can take up to six months before they're ready to hatch. All right, I've only checked about a third of the bag and um, I count at least 10 eggs in this batch of soil here. And unfortunately, none of them are ready. They're not eyed up yet. So I'm just gonna rebag this. So as you can see, uh, trying to look after and hatch annual killifish is a bit more complicated than uh, mop spawning semi-annual killifish. Okay, so I've had these fish in storage now for quite a few more weeks and I've just been raking through the, the peat and I can actually see that some of the eggs have eyed up now. In fact, it looks like most of the eggs are eyed up. So I am going to add them now to the bowl of water and I'll see how many hatch. Now, these eggs were actually collected on the 26th of the 3rd. 2018 and we are now on the 7th of June so that's less than two months and they have an incubation period of two to six months and because I've been keeping them in a heated cupboard it seems that uh, it seems that it has speeded up the incubation process so these eggs have a incubation period of roughly two to six months and it's been two and a half months now since they've been collected so they've been at the shorter end of the incubation period because I've been keeping them in a heated cupboard I have now poured all the eggs into the bowl and I suspect within three hours they will start hatching okay so this is day one of these fish hatching and I can already see quite a few fries swimming around in there so I'm going to remove them with a turkey baster into a new container. Now it is vitally important that the water that you transfer this fish into is the exact same water chemistry that you were hatching the eggs in. Um, if not, these fish can go into shock. So as you can see, these fry are absolutely tiny. Okay, so on the first day of hatching, I've collected 13 fry. Uh, these fry are absolutely tiny, so you're going to have to have some infusoria and paramecium to hand and feed them for the first three days on this. And after that, you can move on to brine shrimp. Now, because I know there were 40 plus eggs in this bag, there's still quite a few eggs to hatch. So I'm going to leave the hatching container now for another day and I will collect some more tomorrow. Okay, so this is day two of collecting eggs of this Hypsolobias species. There doesn't seem to be too many fry today, so I will have a good look. As you can see they are quite tricky fish to catch so that's only two today so that makes a total of 15 fry collected so far the 13 fry I caught yesterday are doing well and seem to be feeding which is a really good thing so I'm gonna put the bowl away again and I will try again tomorrow and after tomorrow if I can't find any more fry then I will re-dry and re-bag this particular batch Okay, so this is day three of collecting eggs and today I only see one fry swimming around 
So I'm suspecting that this is going to be the last of the fry to hatch. So I'm going to remove this single fry into the hatching dish. Now I'm going to pour the rest of this peat into a net and I'm going to gently dry it and I'm going to now store it for another week or two weeks and then I will try again. So that gives me a total of 16 fry out of a possible 40 eggs.